Hey guys, Cryptic here, and today I'm going to show you how to get for Ultimacy as Castle. So, yeah, let's start by going upstairs here. We have to take on eight mini bosses in total to unlock everything. So, I'm going to show you where to find all eight. Here's the first one. So, at the moment, we have everything locked. No magic limits anything. I also re realized I've got to heal people. <laughs> Go figure. Yeah, this well, this guy's pretty easy. Just a few, a few basic attacks can punish him, really. And thankfully, he's using thunder against Squall because Squall absorbs thunder. <laughs> Yeah, after a few, like, two shots, his mask breaks. And then, yeah. Just a few basic attacks afterwards, and the fight's over. That's annoying when he summons that thing, though. Just because it makes it take slightly longer. And yeah, I don't know why I made everyone shoot that thing. See, that's an annoying attack he, he's using. Thankfully it only becomes a problem if you're, um, you take your time. If you take too long, then Doom becomes a big problem. And there we go. The Sphinx is dead. Actually, I can't remember its, it's proper name. I just put Sphinx. <laughs> I apologize in advance if I start coughing randomly. I'm recording this just after our 24 hour charity livestream. My first two a little fucked. So yeah, zero experience beating this guy. So I have all these mini bosses. That just that doesn't matter too much. Hey, what I went for first here was limit break. Just for the off chance my health drops low enough to use it. Okay. But for the next boss, we're going to head up through these doors at the back. Then over the chandelier, and it drops. Now that's meant to happen, alright? Now you go down here, because that's just a sort of fast way down. Open the door. And we head into the cellar, where the second mini boss is just waiting. And here he is. Same as before, this guy's pretty easy to take down. Yes, whatever I don't use, I don't like. This guy doesn't like using mini attacks, and he always hits back with lightning. Which I mean is perfectly fine because Irvine and the Squall absorb lightning. But yeah, unfortunately, right now it doesn't give much of a chance to use a limit break here. That's alright. This guy drops pretty quickly. Now, this guy can take a while sometimes just because of his counter attack. But as you can see, I dropped him. It didn't take me too long to beat him, but it could be down half the time if he wasn't countering every single shot. Alright, so that is two done. Nice and easy. No, see, I went for magic here, because magic, it's not essential, but it's extremely helpful. I also realized I can't use full life, because I haven't unlocked resurrection. <laughs> Alright, so for next one we head back up these stairs, and you'll leave the cellar. Alright, so you'll notice a few cuts. We're going through the door on the left, now heading down here, this will take us back to the main hall. We will be back in here a lot during this wee video. 
this room and the room of the chandelier are I think the two most common rooms we go to. Right, so we head up the after we head up the stairs, go for you on the right like I just showed you. And then we head just down the stairs over here. This room will be very important in the next video. Not this one. <laughs> We go, we go through the door, and now we are in the art gallery room. Now, for, to get this boss to appear, we have to solve a puzzle, which can be quite annoying. It involves looking at every single painting. Every single painting will give us a word. And this, this painting's title is, it can't be read. So we need to look at all the paintings and find the three correct words and then put them in the right order. Which can be a little annoying. But once you've looked at all of them, the answer is on the floor in this room, the clock, you can see at the bottom. But it doesn't tell you what order to put them in. <coughs> Sorry about that. Thankfully for you guys, I will skip to when I figured it when I figured it out. Start off, we have to go down to this one. I'm not gonna read these because I can't read these properly. Now after that one, it's this big one here, and then the smaller V word down here, <laughs> and there's the correct order we put them. On. Freshly is a Latin. I don't read Latin, but it means in the garden sleeps a messenger. You know it's correct because that will happen and then this big guy will be here behind you. Now, I, I know I was still dead, but to beat this guy and quite a few of the other mini bosses easily, you need magic. Which, yeah, I... It's, notice the damage I'm doing. It's not much at all. This guy pulls out his wee friends, or one of his wee friends. He has another one he summons. Yeah. So well, what we need right now is Meltdown, which I realize Irvine doesn't have. Here we go. Meltdown on the big guy. And Aura on Irvine. Because most of these fights are going to go more or less the exact same way, so... After this one, I'm just going to show you some of the fights. I'll show you how to get to them, and then skip my sexual fighting. Just to make the video a little quick. Otherwise, we'll be here for a good hour. There you go, skip forward a little bit. And we will see... Him using Drain on his wee buddies. And he'll keep doing that until they die. You can't kill him until you kill his little friends there. So yeah, once we've got rid of them, the fight's over. Again, 0 XP, elemental attack's not bad, 30 AP, alright, let's go. Now for this one, I went with the obvious resurrection. Just to bring Rhinoa back so we have a full team again. Alright, so we revive Rhinoa and then we go through this door at the back. Now, this one is a pain in the ass. The fighters. Getting to them is pretty damn easy. So we go down these stairs. Once we're down here, we just go into this room over here. I seem to be, I like, I always have trouble with the walls. We step in, door closes, we grab this key. And here is the red giant. This guy's like, uh, just like most iron giants, but stronger. So the normal strategy applied. I hit him with Meltdown, Aura, and then I hammered him with some Dark Ammo just to blind him. 
Now that's personally my favorite way to do it. Because if he's blind, he can't hurt you. And Meltdown drops his vitality to zero. If you want to know, if you can't tell whether it's worked or not, just look at his sword. It changed color, so you know Meltdown worked. So yeah, there we have it. This guy is done. He drops pretty quickly. But if, if you don't melt down him to drop his vitality and then blind him to avoid getting hit, he can be quite difficult because he has extremely high defense. Well, defense is a physical attack anyway. See, after beating him, I decided to go for draw this time. Just because there are some draw points around here of decent magic. Like right there, we got for luck. Okay, from here we use the prison key to leave this place. It, it, it. Okay. From here, we stay in the green circle like I just showed you. And we, we don't have to swap junctions, but I did. Well, uh, the best one to swap swap is whoever has Diablos and Counter on, you know. From here, with the second party guys, we're going to head back to the chandelier room. You want to run to the right side of the room, to this green circle, which for some reason didn't trigger for me. I, mean, I keep clicking it, but it just didn't trigger. And there we go. It says a lever has been pressed. So then you swap back. It just means you need to switch junction again. And so now we head back to the chandelier room. Back to where we came, nice and easy. So once you get back to the main hall, you go through the back door again onto the chandelier it doesn't drop you go straight across this time right over and here is the next boss draw some meteor if you want and here we go take this guy down now again same strategy as before guys yeah, as you see here, I just finished him with some pulse ammo. And you know when you're beating him, because he enters the fight with Ultima. That's his death counter. So when he dies, he hits the entire party of Ultima, and then just collapses. So during this fight, try to keep at least one character's HP up. Even if you have to focus one as a healer, just to make sure one character has health, has a decent amount of health left. Just so you don't get absolutely destroyed at the very end. Now, like from here on out, it doesn't really matter what you unlock. It depends on what you want to do. I chose item. Just to so he's a phoenix down and Omega Relix to heal everyone, don't waste my magic. For the next boss we go back to Chandelier Room. Back across the Chandelier. And from the main hall we're going to turn left. We go in the store down here. So when we're back in the main hall, we head down, back down the stairs. To the door on our left again, we're heading back to the chandelier room. Once in the chandelier room, we head down the door at the very back. Yeah, there's a drill point over here, we can go grab this. If you need it. If not, you head into the chapel, which is the door at the very back. Now you see this giant purpley black smoke, that... That is extremely important for the next video. Right now, that's, that's nothing you need. Now, that key that dropped, you can grab that key if you walk on the bridge. But me being me, I chose to run, and yeah, it, it fell. <laughs> but it's okay. You can pick it up pretty much exactly where you need to use it. So that's where we're going. So from here, we're going to head all the way back down to the, to the prison area. So yeah. 
and now we're back in the prison area. This is what I mean by there is a lot of back and forth in this area. So you see that we shiny thing? That's the key. <coughs> Sorry about that guys. So we go inside, we grab this key here. And now we head into the armory door. This guy is a little annoying as well. You can see his head's in there, it's sticking out of the smoke. Alright, so to beat this guy. It's more of the same strategy as before. Except you've got to take his head and hands down before you can actually fight him. So yeah, just hammer his head and hands with whatever you got. Use aura and hammer some limits if you want to. I mean, it all works. Yeah, once you've dropped his head and hands, that's when he shows up. Now this big bastard counters every attack as well. You might notice pattern here, these guys seem to like countering. But yeah, so I just aura it up and handle limits. That was the easiest way for me to win this fight for me. And it's a tried and true method now. It's easy and it fucking works. So yeah, hammer of a limit, eventually he'll die. When he does die, again no XP, you get a life ring and a, a whole bunch of stuff. And a lot of AP. But again, at this point in the game, not much of that matters too much. I mean, I went for the command abilities to unlock next, but I don't really need it for these next fights. So yeah, that's four down. Four down? Well, most down. There's two left. <laughs> Alright, so yeah, from here, we have to run all the way back again. Okay, again, from the chandelier room, we're going to run back to the courtyard, the door at the very back again. Now we're in the courtyard, we look around here to find the treasure vault key. That can take a little bit of time to find, depending on how lucky you are. Words I can't speak today. But now we have to run all the way back again. Once in the main hall, we go upstairs and turn left. Now we take this door all the way back here, and then we go down. We go downstairs from here. Because it's really the only way to go. Then through the door. The long hallway. You stop. As we. Yeah, the door hidden right here. You go through this, and you're onto your next puzzle. Now this puzzle is extremely easy to do. It, yeah. You, yeah, just, just watch. I'll, I'll draw some holy here. And it, it's almost like they didn't even try with this one. So you go to the first one, click that. Go to the second one. You go to the third one, and you click the fourth one, and then that's it. The, the code thing for this is literally one, two, three, four. <laughs> yeah, once, you, once you've done that, you run on in, start this fight. Again, this is another one who likes to counter after a couple hits, after hits. He's another one with some high vitality as well, meaning your attacks do less damage. So, hit him with Meltdown, and then just hammer him with some limits, and you win within a couple turns. But he does. He likes Meteor. That is something I remembered. And that just happens to be his death counter as well. Because these guys like countering when they die. Alright, so this guy was, again, pretty easy. They're all pretty easy. As long as you're hitting them with, like, Meltdown, they're spamming the limits. They're, most things are easy. So now that he's dead, 
I went for save this time. I saved GF to last because I never use them. From here, we have to run all the way back yet again. Once the courtyard, head back to the chapel. All the way back, you know, we've been here a few times now. But this time, we need to head upstairs. Now cross the bridge where the key fell down into the door, through the door to the left. See a save point here? It's always good to save when you have the opportunity. Especially after taking down almost every mini boss then we then about to take the last one on. Now, so after you save we run all the way upstairs. Well I say all the way, don't go all the way to the top, just follow this Spiral staircase up to near the top. Eventually, you'll see a bell, and that bell is really useful for this because, uh, yeah, it's the only way to get to where you need to go. Okay, so now you'll see the bell. You just keep running around until you get to the left side of it. Don't do what I did and run all the way up. And then realize what you have to do. So from here, jump on over to the bell when it's near you. It can take a few attempts to get in the right spot. And there we go. Jump on and then you jump off the other side through this weed door here. And you'll be on the balcony. Of the last of the mini bosses, tire match. This guy again is pretty easy. In fact, he only has one attack. Like death flare or something like that. Whatever it was something it was called. I forgot what it was called. But yeah, just aura limit breaks, it's easy. And he doesn't use his attack straight away ever. I'll let this fire play for him. Just to show you what I mean. So you have the limit breaks out. Da. D-A. Alright. So he'll sit there spelling. And as you can see, my little rakes aren't popping up because RNG is not liking me. It's now Dark F. And this guy happened, decided he wanted to show up for this one. You guys remember him? The one who took Odin's shield when he died? I don't like him as a random summon. You see, he did one damage. At least with Odin, when Odin showed up, it was a one-shot kill to whatever you're fighting. When he shows up, he has four different swords, and he'll randomly choose one. He'll, he could use Odin's sword to one-shot an enemy. He could use a sword that deals 9999 damage to an enemy. He could use a sword that halves the enemy's health. Or the one you just seen, that deals a single damage. No matter what enemy you're fighting, it deals a single damage. And if you've been reading at the top, this TMA dude is about to use Dark Flare, not Death Flare. My bad. <laughs> it can be a painful attack. Just depending on what you got junctioned, because it's an elemental attack. You'll see what I mean. Here it is, Dark Flare. Look me just spamming the button trying to let the brakes show up, and they're not showing up. The Urbana right now took a massive hit. Scroll didn't take any damage at all. 
Because, yeah, it's the way I had his magic junction. He took zero damage from that attack. We hit him with some pulse ammo. Or, as some of the commenters have been saying, some uh, Kamehameha waves. And there we go. Tiamat is down. Now, with all the cutting I've, I've done of the back and forth in some of these fights, this video should only go for just over half an hour. But actually doing all this, all the back and forth, all the fighting, even when you beat them that quickly, took me uh, about an hour. So yeah, this, it does take a while, but it's not that difficult. And now let's see which one you want to unlock. The only one left. Alright. From here, I just went to the drop point, had trouble, and head back down to where we were before to save the game. And that is how you finish Ultima Sears Castle. Get all your summons, all your abilities back, take on all the mini bosses. Nice and easy. It's not not too difficult to do, and that's that's cool. But we're not quite finished yet. Well, this video will be, but yeah. In the next video, I am going to show you guys how to, how to find and how to beat the single most difficult boss in this game. He makes the final boss, Ultima Sia, look like nothing. He makes Ultima Weapon look easy. So yeah, I'm going to show you guys how to take on Omega Weapon. That'll be in the next video. He's a goddamn nightmare to beat, I'll tell you that. <laughs> but yeah, you, you guys will see that soon. If you enjoyed this one though, make sure you leave a like. Feel free to leave a comment down below. And if you want to see more videos in the future, just make sure you hit subscribe. Other than that, I'll catch everyone later.